Hello and welcome to KAUS Live. We're coming to you from the Clean Combustion Research Center on KAUS campus. The Future of Fuels Research Conference is currently underway. So Basim Dali and Amir Farouk uh, stopped by to speak to us about their research and a bit about the future of fuels. Gentlemen, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having us. So uh, Amir, I'll, I'll start with you. Um, what is the goal of the conference? Talk to us a little bit about what's happening this week. Okay. So as we know that energy and fuels are two of the biggest challenges that our world is facing right now, mm -hmm. and couple that with the global warming and the events that we are seeing affected by that. So we wanted to bring together experts from industry, national labs, and academia together, and then discuss what does the future look like? Where is it that we should really concentrate our efforts and how we can create some synergistic values by bringing these three different groups together mm -hmm. and work together in solving this, uh, uh, these big challenges that, that we have on what the fuels are going to look like in future, what the energy landscape is going to look like in future. And um, I think so far we've been, we're having a tremendous time with, uh, with all these people. Right, that's a pretty wide scope. Um, yeah. Talk to us a little bit about then how that links in with the CCRC mission and what you guys are working on. Sure. So in CCRC, we have two main objectives. Mm. We want to increase the efficiency of all combustion-based technologies, and we want to minimize their impact uh, on the environment, whether it be through CO2 emissions or it be through some harmful pollutants like NOx and soot. So with those objectives, we want to stay abreast with what is the future in terms of fuel landscape, right? And mm -hmm. yes, Saudi Arabia is a big producer of uh, uh, crude oil and so forth, and, and we concentrate on those, but we see that how things evolve, we have to also uh, evolve our efforts uh, in the same way and see what the fuel mix is going to look like mm -hmm. and how the combustion technologies and combustion concepts that we work on uh, will need to address those challenges and opportunities, actually. Right, which leads to you, Basim. Um, you are at the University of Adelaide. That's right. Uh, so tell us a little bit about your work there. So we have a center for energy technology, not dissimilar to the center here in, in mm -hmm. Kaust. We're looking at everything energy, uh, and combustion is only uh, part of it. Mm -hmm. We sort of um, do solar energy, we do wind energy, tidal wave, as well as combustion. And what we managed to do is also a hybridize or a connect the renewables with the traditional, both for power generation, electricity, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and also for fuel. And uh, so we, we believe that uh, uh, the renewables have a role to play in creating the fuels of the future, mm -hmm. because we spent decades developing the combustion technology, which we could still use mm -hmm. if we actually come up with the uh, new fuels that actually don't have as much uh, carbon footprint as such. I see. Well, do, would you use some of these future fuels as sinks for uh, essentially potential energy coming from uh, PVs and, and, and those sorts That's of things? That's right. right. So um, there's a concept of other e-fuel or solar fuel. Mm. Basically, these are fuel that's been generated using uh, energy from the sun. Mm -hmm. And because the sun is, you know, it can shine every day, so it's sustainable. It's something that we could do again and again. Right. Alternatives is to use biomass, and that sort of helps recycle the carbon into the plants and, and you burn it and sort of you use it again. Mm -hmm. What's the mix in Australia? Um, what do you think is the next sort of growth opportunity for? So um, there's quite, f quite a few different options. Mm -hmm. Hydrogen uh, lately is becoming very popular. Mm. Uh, hydrogen you could generate uh, by using uh, what's called electrolysis. Basically you generate electricity using PV or wind. Mm -hmm. And if you have excess of those, you could uh, separate the hydrogen and oxygen in water. And so you end up with hydrogen basically. Right. The alternatives is to use methane, which we have a lot of, natural gas. There, methane has one carbon and four hydrogens. You could again take the hydrogen away, but you have then to deal with the carbon. If you release it to the air, it's the same as burning um, methane or natural gas. So we look at ways by which we could utilize the carbon for something else. I see. Okay. Um, Amir, tell us a little bit about the work that you're personally doing um, in the CCRC. Yeah. So. In my group, in collaboration with other colleagues, um, we look at uh, the chemistry of fuels. So we see that as the fuel landscape is evolving, as currently maybe for transportation, we have gasoline and diesel, but mm. in future there will be more additions to it of biofuels, e-fuels, um, some low carbon fuels, natural gas, CNG, LPG, maybe going to hydrogen uh, as a fuel, 
some other hydrogen carriers like ammonia, dimethyl ether, and so forth. So there's a big sort of spectrum of fuels. So what we try to study is that how does their chemistry will affect eventually the combustion in practical devices, whether it be an internal combustion engine or whether it be a gas turbine. Yeah. So we have specialized reactors in my lab which help us really uh, look at the chemistry differences and the fuel property differences and how it would manifest itself in terms of efficiency and emissions. Yeah. And we do that with the help of some advanced diagnostic techniques as well. Uh, we call them laser-based sensors. So those really help us probe at molecular level uh, what the key differences are in the fuel properties and their performance. How do we, and this is for both of you guys, how, how do we solve the problem then of coming up with some amazing future fuel and then getting it to the place where people will actually be able to access it and, and use it? How do we solve that problem? There's something called, we've been talking about, called it translational research. Mm. That you take an idea from the lab mm. to sort of a prototype level, by which then it becomes attractive for the industry to adopt. You know. mm -hmm. So um, to do that, you need to look at the cost effectiveness of it in the first place. Then uh, you need to solve some of the technology issues associated with it. Mm -hmm. And so while well, Amir sort of looks a little bit more on the fundamental side on, uh, on his uh, shock tubes and so on, we take it to the next level where we actually uh, burn it in, in burners, uh, which imitating sort of industrial systems. Mm -hmm. And we also use laser diagnostics because it's non-intrusive to be able to then understand what would the, the combustion looks like under sort of uh, more uh, realistic conditions. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so um, that help us then advance across the way to when it's going to be adopted later in industry. Right. I think to me it's the uh, concerted efforts of uh, university research plus industry and then maybe some help from national labs as well. They all have to come together for this transformation to take place and let's not forget the policy makers, right? Mm -hmm. So there has to be some help and some motivation by the policy makers to make this transformation happen, right? Whether it be towards electric vehicles or whether it be towards more um, carbon less carbon fuels or carbon neutral fuels maybe in future, right? Uh, all of these players have to come together. And, uh, and that's where, for example, we are working very closely with Saudi Aramco and with some, with some other industries like General Electric. Mm -hmm. And uh, Saudi Aramco is working closely with automakers. So uh, I think all of these uh, players have to come together and that's the only way we will be able to make uh, uh, some shift uh, in the business as usual. Research conferences like this often bring together new collaborations. Are there any that you guys are excited about or um, any ideas that you have about collaborations in the future that could lead to something big? Sure, I think this was one of our key goals for this conference oh. was to bring together experts like uh, Bassam uh, mm -hmm. and, and others uh, to Kaos um, so that they can see what we have to offer here, what facilities we have, what expertise we have and then we can engage with them uh, in utilizing their expertise uh, in sort of enhancing what we are doing already. So absolutely, I think this is a key for, in today's world, the problems are so multidimensional and so complex that you need collaborative and concerted efforts to, uh, to reach to some, some goal or some meaningful impact. Mm -hmm. And so, so I think that's why, to me, this has been like me and Bassam were actually just at dinner last evening, we're talking about a potential research collaboration, right? right. So, so it's, it's been fantastic from that aspect. Okay. Yeah, same, the same for us. Um, collaboration is key. Nobody can do everything by themselves mm -hmm. or afford all the facilities they require. Mm -hmm. And as Amir said, uh, expertise are important as well. Um, so um, in that regard, I think um, I quite liked being here. Um, I visited the labs and was impressed with them. Right. But there's this is, um, magic, if you, if you want, in sitting in one room uh, with experts from around the world, uh, debating issues and formulating your ideas about what needs to happen. and. Um, you know, you could test your ideas. You right. could say something and somebody says, no, I, I think differently and so mm -hmm. on. And that really is the benefits of the whole conference in my view, is the interaction. Mm -hmm. uh, people debate, can we actually sit in our offices and log in online? And it will never Read happen. Papers, yeah. <laughs> because the the face-to-face, -face, the interaction, the, yeah. um, the discussion mm -hmm. is what the conference is about. Otherwise, we could read it you know, in papers. Sure. Right. Wonderful. Well, thank you both for being here. We appreciate it. Thank you for having Thank us. Thank you for the opportunity. Yeah. Fantastic. And that's all the time that we have for today. Remember to comment, like, and share on all the Kaust social channels and from all of us here at Kaust. Thanks for joining us. <laughs>